Howdy guys, I'm Jeep and Jason, and this time on the Auto Edits Jeep Buildup, we're gonna be finishing off the axle install with a steering stabilizer. Now, I went with the Icon Vehicle Dynamics Centerline Steering Stabilizer, and there's a lot of reasons why, but first off, look at this bad boy. I'm gonna to talk to you about the difference between a traditional push-pull style and this one, which is a through shaft. So, <laughs> through shaft, let's get this going. So now before we get this thing mounted up underneath the Jeep, let's run you through some of the features of this and the difference between this and what would be considered a standard style push-pull shock on the front of the Jeep for a steering stabilizer. Now, this thing right here, aluminum bodied, so it's pretty trick, 6063 aluminum, so it's like aircraft grade aluminum, high quality um, steel shaft through the uh, shock body and FK rod end bearings here. Now this is the mid-tier shock in the Icon setup. They have a kind of a universal shock. They have this guy, and then they have this guy with a external reservoir. So even I don't know if that's necessary for me, and I expect a lot out of my rig, but if you just want that look, so that aesthetic, look already how cool this is. Can you imagine this with a piggyback reservoir? It's pretty badass. This right here is my old uh, rock sport steering stabilizer. And this is what you would see as a typical push pull style shock. And so the, the shock compresses and then and opens up. Now this isn't a nitrogen charged shock, so there should be no push, but a traditional push pull style shock that is just inherent to those forces. Now this being a center line style shock offers you a consistent dampening force on the shaft throughout the steering, regardless of impact. So that's kind of going to be kind of cool. I'm curious to see if I actually feel a difference. So we'll get this thing thrown on there. But those are the differences. This was not bad. I was very, I was happy with this thing. Uh, this is just kind of a step up from that. So that's the basics of this. Now, like I said in the intro, this is a very easy and high reward upgrade install for you guys. Now, the only reason I don't make this E for everyone and B for beginner is that you will need one specific tool. Now I'm gonna use my heavy duty torque wrench because we're gonna be mounting into the track bar mount and that's an important thing to get tight. And this, the instructions on this actually request that you get that to 150 foot pounds. So getting that tool is unique to this, like a standard 3 8 inch drive. I think this only goes up to 75 or 100 foot pounds. So you're gonna have to break out that one tool to make sure you get your track bar tight. That's it. This is gonna be a fast and easy one. Really high reward on that scale. So this one pegs that because it looks amazing and I'm anxious to drive it and see what it feels like. All right, so we'll set that there for now. Now the big hardware here is just for getting the track bar mount bolt off. Now the stock bolt we just tightened down to 125 foot pounds factory. You may notice I have this motorcycle or this ratchet strap here. This is just to help keep the track bar located while we take this bolt out. So it technically, it technically shouldn't actually move on us. We'll find out. So for now, we'll just buzz this bolt out. Now, if you were doing this install and removing your stock one, you would just be pulling that stuff off at this particular time. So there you go, I, I didn't need this thing. I actually moved the axle the wrong direction. So we'll just get this off. So let me show you what I mean. See down inside here, that's the track bar in the mount there. I actually just drug it out a little bit. So I'm just gonna use my little, little bar here and just move it back to where we need it to be. So we're gonna take and prep. We'll cut the little tie off that holds the little standoff in place. We'll get the bolt that comes with it in place and we'll see if we can get that to go through. Now here's a quick little tip. When you're trying to just thread a bolt through 
a hole like this. If it moves easy like this, you're not damaging the threads, but if you're literally grinding away at this to thread this through there, you might be damaging the threads and you might wanna get your little poker dude here and uh, get the hole lined up. But you can see that I'm, uh, it's kind of just going in pretty easy. I'm just doing a very light persuasion on this. So that means we got it lined up pretty good. See if we got threads on the back side, and we do. So then for back there, we'll take the washer and the bolt that it comes with. We'll get that captured for now. We won't tighten that down yet. One of the things I want to explain really quick is that the Ultimate Dana 44 comes with this unfortunate tab here for this one style of pin style Rancho shock that goes here. And I went ahead and decided to order that and it was on back order forever. I don't like it, I don't want it, um, especially when there are some really high performance options on the market like this thing. Um, I, I don't think that, that that's, a, that's a good thing. So eventually I'll cut that thing off because it's close to these other steering components and I don't like being committed to that. Besides, there, there are much higher quality shock options here. So now it's important to get this lined up right since this is a through shaft you want to make sure obviously the jeep the tires are dead center right now so you want to start there the shock comes with this little gauge right here so you can just now you want to just align it to where this shock sits right here so we're at there and the gauge just tells you where you want this to be so now we know we can actually bolt our fancy dancy little clamp on here now i just forgot we're going to go ahead since this is aluminum housing i'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of anti-seize on here since these look like stainless bolts good habit to do have you guys ever struggled with that when you try to just put a little dab of anti-seize on something it never ends up being a little dab it goes logo this way so we'll get these all buzzed down they definitely want to keep an eye on keeping it even. You never want to clamp unevenly on one side, just monster down. So now that we got that thing kind of just snugged in place and we know we like our distance from here, let's just get it lined up. So now you can see that the ball joints have some play going forward and backward here. So you just want to make sure that you don't have this thing where it's going to be impacting anything during that. So I think right in the middle of the play is where I'll just kind of get it dialed a little bit. And we'll see, we'll take it for a drive and see what it does. So once we get that kind of stabilized, we like that. Let's pull this little magnetic cap off, pull our little gauge off. Oops, throw our magnetic cap, magnetic cap back on the ground. This thing's actually kind of cool. We'll just, that thing just kind of, sticks in place there, it's kind of cool. These go to eight foot pounds. So let's just tighten those down. Good. We're gonna cross this pattern up. Good. Good. And good, all right. Now for the heavy duty stuff over here, we'll go ahead I think this is a 22 on the back side. Let's see if we can get a wrench on this. Aha, can't. Oh yeah, lots left. Okay, so now we'll go in with our torque wrench set to, I broke my glasses last week, so I have to go back to my old ones. 150 foot pounds, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay, we got it. All right, so we have it buttoned up. Everything looks really good. Here are a few of the things to just double check before you take it out on the road. A good idea now is I just cycled it through the, the steering, full left, full right. Now I have the reed knuckles on here at the full length, so they have slightly less steering than a stock knuckle, so it's good to just double check that you get the center right, obviously, and then right up here on Jeeps that are a little bit lower, like this Jeep, still only three and a half inch lift, you wanna make sure that this 
guy right here is gonna clear. The next lowest thing here seems to be the lower radiator hose. So you just wanna make sure that in the up travel, uh, that that's not gonna find that. Now, this one doesn't have the reservoir, the external reservoir, so I don't, this, it's not gonna hit anything. So, visual, pass is visual, let's go drive it. All right, let's go and get a quick test drive in and see how it feels. Immediately, I'll just tell you right now, I was hoping the steering would stay nice and light feeling like it was on our first test drive after getting the axle installed and running no stabilizer. Um, a lot of people say that that tightens up with certain ones and this one feels great. It feels very light and the same and that's what I want from this thing. So right off the bat, hardly notice it intruding in the steering. Thumbs up. Um, all right, let's uh, hit a few bumps and see what this thing does. Get up to speed. And we'll see. Right now, feeding uh, input at a stop, making a turn. I don't even know it's there. It's great. Wow. All right, we got some big manhole covers here. Let's hit these. Hit these at 45. Whoa. I didn't feel anything. All right, so there you go. That's what you expect. I'm not going to go, oh my gosh, it's the greatest thing ever because. When you're getting something at this price point, it should do that, and wow, it does. Um, so I'm impressed. I like it. Can say major auto edits thumbs up for the center line icon center line. So there you go. Uh, that was a no-brainer why I went this way, and look at that thing. Right? Thing looks amazing. So, uh, you may also notice I've been wearing, rocking my Spicer shirt. Well, I did. we did the axle install last week. A care package showed up with a shirt, a hat, some stickers and posters. I guess we did something right. Someone over there watched our install video. So, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Hey, Icon, Adrian, send me some swag. I'll wear it. Um, anyway, this is good. I think, uh, we're done, we're done with the front end for now on the Jeep. This feels fantastic. I mean, it feels like I'm driving a car. Um, and that's a huge compliment for driving something as capable as this off-road. Speaking of off-road, I think we should go put it in the dirt. Let's do that. So we'll put it in four low and climb this fun little hill I like right here. Wow, look at how it just kind of, it does exactly what you'd expect and that's fantastic. Always so fun to just bounce around in the dirt for a minute or two. Oh god! I just let her go there. It felt pretty great. Really going the right way with this thing. I love that. There you go, another refinement to the Jeep. We're making huge swings at this thing, sometimes with little parts that make a huge difference in the feel and the performance of this thing. Um, I'm really loving the way this thing is feeling. All of this stuff we did to the front and then the center line uh, stabilizer, <laughs> it feels like driving a car around town. I love that. How To expect that from this is unreasonable, but it does. So these little things stick around. We got a lot more stuff coming for this Jeep project. So make sure you're subscribed, hit the notifications. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to enjoy your drive. A little more dirt here I gotta hit.